Merry Christmas to the big dogs. What's cracking? Big dogs. Welcome bike to the channel. Welcome bike to another Christmas spent with me, unfortunately. It's week 16. You know, everyone everyone takes off. This is like the week where everyone takes off, goes, you know, celebrates with their family, you know, COVID independent of that and businesses shut down, especially like you know, coming from a, a marketing ish background, like in New York, all the all the companies typically shut down for this last week and you get the whole last week, sometimes two weeks off of December going into the new year. And I'm like, this is on bullshit because fantasy football picks up and this is its busiest time of the year in a sense, because y'all got your chip week. It's chip week. And I know some of y'all, I want to start off by saying, I know some of y'all have your chips in week 17. I don't know what my content schedule is going to be like next week. I might be like, fuck it. I don't feel like doing fantasy football stuff right now. But I know some of y'all are still thriving. And some of you guys have double matchups. Like you got, you know, week 14, 15 was your semifinals. You do two weeks per playoff matchup or whatever. So what I think I'm going to do for y'all that are in week 17, since I don't know if I'm going to be able to promise you content week 17, I will make all of my rankings available to the public. Four week 16, it's four week 17, not week 16. Week 16 rankings will be available on Patreon, patreon.com forward slash BDGE. For y'all week 17 people, I will post about it on probably Twitter and Instagram and, and these socials. So make sure, you know, I'll, I'll drop it um, on here somewhere. So if you are in week 17, you'll get my rankings one way or another for free. You don't got to be a Patreon. But we're here talking about week 16. So I was finishing up my rankings this morning. I want to get this video done prior to Christmas because I'm going home back to New Jersey for the holidays. Hold on. Let me open this window right quick. You have some fresh daylight, some fresh air up in this bitch. I know you all saw that Roddy White jersey, my favorite Falcon ever. I guess second to Michael Vick because he's kind of the reason I'm a Falcons fan to begin with. So we're going to look at my running bikes. We're going to look at my wide receivers. We're going to look at guys that I like a little bit more. I like a little bit less than consensus this week. Again, make sure that your lineups are set because we got a wacky schedule this weekend. We got a game on Friday. We got three games on Saturday. And then we got, you know, the regular Sunday, Monday shits going on. Okay. So keep that in mind when you're setting your lineups, when you're looking at injuries. And of course, I filmed this on Thursday. So there's going to be a lot of shit that happens between now and whenever you end up watching this. I'm assuming that a lot of you guys probably won't even watch it on Christmas. So a lot of you guys will probably watch it on Saturday. Just keep all that in mind when you start fucking yelling at me in the comments and whatnot. Let's move over to the rankings, which again can be found on Patreon. But before we do that, y'all know I'm going to tuck my jersey into my sweatpants. Just tuck your shirts in. Stop yelling. Let's eat. Also, surefire way, life hack right here, surefire way to make sure you win your championship matchup is to make sure you go congratulate your opponent. Tell your tell your opponent congratulations on your week 16 championship. There's no better person in our league to be wearing the crown, man. I'm I'm happy to have played and lost to you in our finals week 16 matchup. Nothing's going to get them angrier. That's a locked up dub right there, okay? So right now, right after this video, I want you to text, go to your group chat, and wish the other person... Uh, or congratulate the other person on winning the championship. That's how you get the fucking fire started, all right? That's how you start off your championship week. What's up, everyone? George here. It is September 9th. It's 5.30 in the morning. Really excited. NFL season starting tomorrow. I uh, just want to make a quick video and congratulate Scott on the upcoming win for our league, the Go Fade Me League. Probably going to beat me, and then he's going to beat Nick in the finals. You know, it's destiny. Nothing we can do. So, uh, well-deserved, Scott. Well-deserved. Congrats, Scott. You did it, baby. Congrats on the chip, Scott. Congrats, Scott. If anybody deserves it, it's you. I mean, you're the best man I know, the best editor I've ever met. Congrats, Scott. You're just a dynasty workhorse. I mean, I couldn't think of a better guy to hand over my ring to. Scott, congratulations, man. You did it. It was 16 weeks in the making. I'm glad if I'm going to lose, it's going to be to somebody as dominant as you. Congrats, Scott. Congratulations, Scott. Scott, man. Congrats on the win. Can't think of anyone that deserves this win more. Congrats, Scott. Just want to send out my congrats to Scott. He went from shitty editor to the Go Fade Me champ. Well done, Scott. You deserve it. Congrats, Scott. Congrats, Scott. Congrats, Scott. Congratulations, Scott. Congrats, Scott. You did it, buddy. And nobody deserves it more than you. Hey, Scott, congratulations, my man. 
Hey, Scott. Congrats, bro. You son of a bitch, you did it. Congrats. Congrats, Scott. The weekend is yours. I couldn't think of a better person to come away from this whole week 16 mess of championships with a fistful of rings. You're the new Tom Brady of fantasy football. You know what? Fuck you, Scott. It's fucking RJ season, baby. All right, our typical guys, top seven is pretty much on par with the ECR. I've got Tony Pollard at running back eight, and this is extremely dependent on Zeke's calf. Apparently, Zeke is supposed to play, or he says he'll be ready to play. If that's the case, this makes a very tricky dynamic, very tricky situation. Same thing with the Pittsburgh Steelers right now. I have James Conner ranked very low. I have Benny Snell ranked very low because we're still waiting on uh, what the status is with James Conner's quad. Now, against Philly, Philly's been actually, they haven't actually been that good against, they're one of those teams that like, I was thinking about this the other day. There's, there's some teams where like their defense has been on one side of the ball, either run or one side of the play calling. Like Philly's run defense, I feel like just year in and year out for like as long as I can remember, as long as I've been alive, their run defense is just like always good. You know, it's like one of those teams where no matter what happens, no matter what year it is, like that side of the ball on that defending that certain play, Philly's run defense, just good. You know, they've always been that way. But this year they've been they've been kind of mediocre against the run. So if Tony Pollard plays and Zeke doesn't, he's going to be all the way up at RB8. He is a surefire thing. He's one of the most elusive backs in the NFL. They're clearly not worried about giving him a huge workload. And he's very involved in the passing game. So he'll be a clear RB1. If Zeke plays, this is going to make both of them risky flex plays. Because Zeke has, has not been good in his own right this year. They're going to force him into volume. Some of it's going to be like that empty calorie volume between the 20s. He'll get the goal line work. How much goal line work is there? I don't really know. Will he get a lot of passing down work? Has Tony Pollard played himself into a little bit of a bigger role? It gets everything confusing. So if Zeke suits up, Zeke's probably going to be the starter, probably gets a few more valuable touches, but both of them would be like RB3 flex plays. And I'm not confident about either of them. So that kind of stinks if your name is Scott and you own both of them and you're playing against me in the Go Fade Me League dynasty championship uh but congrats on your win scott really 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 proud of you great guy you just des you deserve everything coming towards you leonard fournette i've got up at running back 13 which is three spots higher than consensus uh the reports out of tampa bay are that ronald jones will not be suiting up they play at detroit detroit is so bad against the run so bad and leonard fournette I'm not going to say he's so bad at running, but we could have a conversation if you want to. doesn't matter, though. This is an offense scoring a lot of points. He is the starting running back, and he is getting a lot of work. We saw last week he scored two touchdowns. They were not impressive touchdowns, but the touchdowns are going to come when you are the starting running back behind Tom Brady and his Tampa Bay offense, putting up 30 points a game right now and playing against the Detroit Lions. So this is, a, this is the Saturday game, or is this the Friday? What's the Friday game? What's the Christmas game? Let me check right quick. Viking Saints. Oh, that's a good game. Okay. So Friday is tomorrow. Actually, when you're watching this or you already fucking watched this, Vikings Saints. So we won't really get too much into that. Tampa Bay, Detroit is the one o'clock. They are nine and a half point favorites over under 54. So they are projected to put up a lot of points in this one. Almost 31 point, 32 points, I believe. 32 plus 22. That's nine and a half spread would be 54. Yep. So they're projected to put up around 32 points. Uh, I would, I would, I would really highly, highly, highly recommend you projecting a running back to get into the end zone. That running back would be Leonard Fournette. So he is a borderline RB1 for me this week, and he will probably be involved in the passing game as well. So we have Leonard Fournette 13. I've got DeAndre Swift at 14. Obviously on the flip side of the ball, that's a tough defense to run against, but he's getting a lot of work, getting a lot of passing work. Again, 10 point underdogs. So they will need to pass. And that's where DeAndre Swift makes his money in half PPR and full PPR leagues. Jeff Wilson, I have up at 16, which is six spots higher than consensus. I think they've shown right now up to this point with Mostert out, Jeff Wilson is the next guy up and he's the guy getting the goal line touches. Uh, they're playing against Arizona, who's not a defense to be nervous about per se. Uh, last week, he got 16 carries despite Raheem Mostert being the starter and getting most of the first half touches. So I think we should be in store for 15 to 18 touches from Jeff Wilson. He got four targets, didn't convert any of them into anything, but involved on the ground, involved in the passing game, and wildly involved on the goal line. So I think Jeff Wilson, while he might not be that exciting, he doesn't have a crazy ceiling. Like he he has had multiple touchdown games before, and I think that's in his range of outcomes. So I really like Jeff Wilson up as like a strong 
running back two play. Le'Veon Bell, probably going to get a lot of questions about Le'Veon Bell. I have him at running back 18. Consensus has him at running back 20. So I'm actually a little bit higher. Go against Atlanta. Uh, Atlanta's obviously tough on the ground against running backs. Le'Veon Bell is just in such a juicy spot. So I think you take the good with the bad there. This is one of those rankings where I think some people will get irrationally high and just be like, you know, it's the Chiefs syndrome where you say, oh, he's a starting running back for the Chiefs, starting running back for Patrick Holmes. But we've also seen Le'Veon Bell just like not be good this year. So I think you take both of those factors into the range of outcomes. And you say there's a possibility that he gets good volume, 15, 17 touches, but is wildly inefficient on them. Maybe he doesn't get the goal line score because it's not like week in and week out. That's why we loved Clyde coming into the season. It was the fact that when Patrick Mahomes was the starting quarterback, running backs were getting an unbelievable amount of goal line opportunities and unbelievable amount of scoring opportunities. That just hasn't been the case this year. So with Le'Veon Bell, he might get 17 touches. He might average three and a half yards per carry. He might, you know, only catch two passes for 17 yards and there is a there is a a pretty shitty floor there to be had but there's also multiple touchdowns to be had there there's also you know I I don't know what Tyreek Hill Hill status is going to be with the hamstring I don't think it's gonna be a problem he missed a practice last week ended up playing he missed Wednesday's practice with the hamstring y'all will have to keep an eye on the injury reports because as I said we are filming this on Thursday so we don't have a full breakdown of the injuries and shit like that if he's out obviously that's going to be a little bit of a boost to Le'Veon Bell in the run game but right now I think he's just a solid running back too with uh with a pretty wide range of outcomes in my opinion right behind him we have David Johnson and David Johnson I have I have him at running back 19 here's the thing he was like running back 10 yesterday for me then I moved him to like 14 then I moved him to 16 then up to 12 then back to 19 and I'm just like at the end of the day I just the matchup is good the matchup is good against Cincinnati, but I just really, really don't think David Johnson is good at all. Like I, He's just not a good running back anymore. He's horrible on the ground. And I understand the appeal, especially, I think this, you know, run, run, ECR having him as running back 11 is ridiculously tailored towards the recency bias of last week when he caught like 11 passes. That was a game Deshaun Watson threw the ball like 45 times, 50 times, whatever he did. He's not going to have to do that against Cincinnati Bengals playing against Ryan Finley this week. They're also not historically a team that throws to the running backs ever. And I know Duke Johnson is is out, and that's why you'd feel really confident about David Johnson. Here's the thing, like, David Johnson's basically in the same tier. I have I have J.K. Dobbins up at running back 10. Taylor at 11, Jacobs at 12. Like, everyone from those guys down to David Johnson at running back 19, for me, is basically in the same tier. So the gap in rankings is not really indicative of, like, how much I don't like David Johnson this week. It's just, like, if I have to choose a tiebreaker between these guys, I think there's a really good chance that David Johnson, again, just... It goes back to we had that sample size of three years of Deshaun Watson not actually throwing the ball to his running backs. And they have Kiki QT playing well. They have Chad Hansen playing well. They have Brandon Cooks back and fully healthy. There's a chance that, you know, those guys are the ones that get the targets again. David Johnson doesn't see more than three or four targets in this game and then is wildly inefficient on the ground. So I think that's in the range of outcomes. And I want to be clear that I have that kind of posted into his ranking. So, yes, he's a very strong play as a running back, too. I don't want this to deter you from taking him out of your lineups, but. Don't be sad when David Johnson, you know, he'll probably roll into the end zone. That's the thing. They'll get onto the one yard line. He'll get into the end zone and be efficient, inefficient on pretty much every other touch. What else we got? So the uh, the next guy up that is kind of like very different from the ECR rankings would be Miles Gaskin. I have him all the way up at running back 23 right now. He's going to be clear from the COVID IR, I'm pretty sure, 99%. Now, ECR is him at 42. That's obviously because people probably haven't updated their rankings to include the fact that he'll be done from the the COVID list IR. I am going to assume that when Miles Gaskin is healthy, he will become the starter again. And he's averaged like 24 touches a game or 24 opportunities a game when he is the starter. And the reason I feel good putting him back into the lineup after this little hiatus is it's, it's, it's COVID. You know, and it can obviously affect players differently. And some players have trouble getting back into it. We've seen a lot of players not have trouble getting back into it, but it's not like coming off of a major injury. He's not like coming off of, uh, you know, a high ankle sprain or something like that. Right now, he's coming back from the COVID list. So I have more confidence that he's actually going to be healthy and he'll be able to carry the workload for this Miami Dolphins backfield. But again, you know, if he wasn't COVID related, I'd probably have him up at like running back 15, 13, 12, because he's going against the Raiders. Um, so this does factor into the the whole mess of this whole ordeal that, you know, COVID might play a role in his stamina. Maybe they do pull his workload back a little bit. But I think he's a pretty solid low-end running back, too, if he is active. And right behind him, I've got J.D. McKissick, uh, five spots lower than ECR. I have him running back 24. They have him running back 19. I can understand coming off of last week's game, getting like 20-plus opportunities. Going against Carolina, I don't think they're going to have to throw the ball as much in this game. Antonio Gibson is also 
practicing in a limited fashion. I think there's a chance that he suits up. And if that happens, J.D. McKissick obviously takes a big hit in terms of his his value, his ceiling, his floor, all that kind of shit. So his ranking will be extremely fluid for me. Right after him, we have Darrell Henderson at 25, which is right around ECR. I think, honestly, listen, I like Darrell Henderson, and we know Cam Akers is going to be out. There's something in me that feels like this is kind of a trap game for Darrell Henderson. Uh, I think Cincinnati's run or Seattle's run defense is underrated, and I think that the split between Darrell Henderson and Malcolm Brown in this one is going to be closer to 50-50 than like the Cam Akers type treatment with Darrell Henderson. And we saw Malcolm Brown get work when Cam Akers went down last week, and Darrell Henderson like didn't play a snap in the second half when Cam Akers returned. So I have Malcolm Brown at running back 29. Darrell Henderson running back 25, and that Malcolm Brown ranking is nine spots higher than consensus. So people are ranking Darrell Henderson 15 spots higher than Malcolm Brown. I have them a lot closer. I think the split between those two is actually going to be a lot closer than people are making it out to be. Other than that, we don't really have too many other interesting rankings down here. There's no one else I would really suggest putting into your lineup. I have Ito Smith at running back 33. The only reason I'm even fucking bringing him up is because there was a report that was like specifically tailored towards Ito Smith because he has taken over as a starter because Todd Gurley fucking stinks, but we are told you that shit in the beginning of the year not to draft him, whatever, 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 whatever. Stop drafting players past their prime. And uh, I think that's it for thy running bike. James Conner and Benny Snell will be the biggest movers depending on the health of James Conner. Let's move over to thy wide receiver position. Let me bring up the shadow chart per PFF. Okay, so first on this list, we've got Marquise Brown slated to get shadowed by James Bradbury. Now, Marquise Brown's been playing kind of lights out as of uh, as of recently, and I have him all the way up at like running or wide receiver 27, which is five spots higher than ECR. Now, James Bradbury missed last week's game because he was a high close contact or whatever uh, for the Giants, but he has since been activated because he didn't actually test positive for COVID, so we're not worried about him. He's been really, really fucking good. He's been like a top 10 coverage cornerback per PFF. He's been the guy that shadowed opposing number ones, so I would not be surprised if Hollywood Brown saw the shadow coverage from James Bradbury, which is an obvious downgrade. I still think you could throw Hollywood Brown into your lineups as like a low wide receiver three, a flex play if you wanted to, but I'm not as excited about how he's been playing. Uh, I don't think he's someone that's like, oh, he's been playing so good that you don't have to fucking worry about matchup. James Bradbury's a beast and he's been a tough matchup. We have Malcolm Butler, Tennessee, shadowing Devontae Adams. That don't mean a fucking thing because Devontae Adams is so damn good and Tennessee's pass defense is not so good. Brandon Cook's supposed to get shadowed by William Jackson of the Cincinnati Bengals. This, this is actually interesting because Brandon Cooks really hasn't, uh, you know, taken over as a wide receiver one in Houston. He's take, maybe like statistically he's gotten the most targets and receptions and receiving yards, but not by much. He's not really making big plays. He's not the one getting into the end zone. So I think this is a little bit of a downgrade for Brandon Cooks. And right now where I have all these guys, the Houston offense in the rankings, I have Brandon Cooks up at 23. I have Kiki QT at 34 and I have Chad Hansen at 45. So I think all three guys are playable. I think Brandon Cooks is probably going to get moved down a little bit in my rankings with the fact that he's getting shadow coverage by William Jackson, who's been really good for the Cincinnati Bengals. And I think Kiki QT is continuing to get involved. He would have had a huge fantasy game last week, but he fumbled on like the one or two yard line. He did get into the end zone regardless. Uh, Chad Henson is making plays downfield and he's looked pretty good. The volume is not there, which obviously is what pushes him down to like wide receiver 45. But I think he could probably do worse than than what he's seeing. He's, he's running a lot of those Will Fuller routes deep downfield and they're taking shots to him. So it seems like Watson kind of trusts Chad Henson here. And uh, with Brandon Cooks getting the toughest matchup, it's, it's a little bit of an upgrade for those other guys. What else do we got on the shadow coverage chart? Nothing else. No one else that PFF expects to see pure shadow coverage, which is good for a few guys. Uh, in particular, we've got the top of the group, Brandon Ayuk. I've got all the way up at wide receiver seven. They do not expect Patrick Peterson, who doesn't even fucking matter if he shadows him. Things I need to take into consideration here is whether or not um, George Kittle plays. So George Kittle, it's possible that he returns. I mean, from a team standpoint, like obviously George Kittle should not suit up, but he wants to play. He's a football player. He's a tough fucking dude. He's like, get me bike on the field. Let me run shit. And that would be, I don't, honestly, I wouldn't even really downgrade Ayuk that much. I, I still think they're just like two wildly different positions. Brandon Ayuk's been so good. I don't care who's at quarterback right now. Ayuk's been uh, just lights out. So I am a fan of Ayuk this week as a top 10 receiver easily, regardless of the situation going on around him. I have Mike Evans all the way up at wide receiver eight. 
which is six spots higher than consensus. Mike Evans last week coming off the six for 110 yards seems to me is clearly the number one for Brady in terms of like the valuable targets. And now they get the Detroit Lions who are fucking terrible on defense, both from a run and a pass perspective. They've got like no starting cornerbacks healthy right now. They've got Justin Coleman's the only starting cornerback they have healthy. And Justin Coleman's like a slot cornerback. So he's not going to be on Mike Evans. Uh, you look at the last like five, six, seven fucking weeks. Mike Evans has had over 110 yards receiving and or a touchdown in one, two, three, four, five of the last seven games. Again, I just think him and Brady are clicking on a on a really nice level with a really good matchup right now. So I like Mike Evans all the way up there at wide receiver eight. A couple injury things to kind of keep an eye on. I've I have DK Metcalf at eleven. Really tough matchup against the Rams, obviously, and he'll probably he'll probably, although PFF doesn't project it to happen, he'll get Jalen Ramsey if he is playing and active. He got banged up by the end of the game. Um, and he did come back, but I feel like he was a little bit limited. So I would keep an eye on reports if, if anything pops up with Metcalf there. Still a wide receiver one, but kind of low end because Russ hasn't been playing well lately. Keenan Allen's the other one. I have him a wide receiver 12, which is probably generous given the fact that he didn't play it all last week. He already missed two practices this week. Uh, so I I'd, I'd expect him to start getting in a couple limited practices and then suit up for the game versus Denver. But I would keep a real close eye on this one because Keenan Allen might be very, very limited again. And depending on what practice reports come out, I, I might continue to move him down, 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 down thy lineups. In terms of the Minnesota Vikings wide receivers, I got Jefferson up at nine. Up at nine right now, I've got Thielen down at 15. Jefferson is, is leading that receiving group in basically every statistical category, which makes me want to jump into my monkey knife fight play of today's game. So some of y'all haven't watched this or We'll watch it after this game is already being played, so I'll probably look like a fucking fool. But we are going to take the Monkey Knife Fight rapid fire game here. Now, if you haven't signed up for Monkey Knife Fight, now is the time to do so. This is where you pay for your children's Christmas presents right here with the revenue, with the mortgage we're about to make. The mortgage we're going to pay, the revenue we're going to make, it's going towards your kids' Christmas gifts, okay? MonkeyKnifeFight.com. Use the promo code BDGE when you deposit 10 bucks, you're going to get 20 to play with. If you deposit 20 originally, you're going to get 40, okay? Do the math, that's double. Whatever you throw down, you use the promo code BDGE, it's going to double your deposit bonus up to $50. Then you click on new game, you'll click on football. Actually, basketball just started up too, so for any of y'all NBA heads out there, you could roll with the new tip-off for the NBA season, okay? I don't really do basketball. I don't know statistics when it comes to basketball, so I don't fuck around with that, but y'all can make y'all can pay the mortgage via basketball too. I don't know. I don't care. Whatever makes you happy, but this, this game right here makes me happy because we're going to 6x. We're going to take Justin Jefferson minus three and a half receiving yards over Adam Thielen. Justin Jefferson has led Adam Thielen in receiving yards in five of the last seven games, and he's become the alpha there. It's just, it's just, it's just facts. You have Dalvin Cook versus Alvin Kamara, plus nineteen and a half rushing yards. Alvin Kamara's just not, he's not a runner, man. He just like doesn't put up big statistical numbers on the ground when Dalvin Cook just does week in and week out. On the flip side, the passing yardage. Although Kamara's got the easier run defensive matchup and running against the Saints is obviously very tough. I still think Dalvin Cook's just getting fed 25, 30 carries a game. He keeps churning out 100, 120 yard games. And that's something I don't think Kamara is going to be able to keep up with on the ground. Quarterbacks though, this is where it gets a little tricky. We have Drew Brees, we have Kirk Cousins. They're giving Kirk Cousins two and a half passing yards. So it's pretty much a break even on the passing yards. I'm actually going to take Drew Brees here because of the matchup. The Saints defense has been playing well and uh, the Minnesota Vikings pass defense is terrible saints are not they're just not a run team really i know that drew Brees' arm has looked kind of like spaghetti like but regardless they're not a team that hands off to their running backs like 30 35 times a game they pass the ball a lot and i know most of their receivers are banged up at this point so this probably looks like an ignorant play but i would imagine kamara gets a lot of receiving yards i would imagine uh Emmanuel sanders gets a, a decent amount of receiving yards hopefully marcus calloway's bike into the lineup we can make some things happen with jared fucking cook because i need him I need Jared Cook this week. So we're going to go Drew Brees. We're going to go just this fucking top row right here. We throw down 10, we 6X it. We throw down 10, we're going to make 60 from it, okay? That's how you pay the mortgage. That's how you pay the bills, okay? If this game already passed by the time you're watching this, you can go fuck around. You can go take the Tampa Bay line game. You could go take the 49ers versus Cardinals. You got the Dolphins versus the Raiders. There are a ton of games to be played here, okay? You could do touchdown dances. You could do over-unders. A lot of fun. MonkeyKnifeFight.com. Use the promo code BDGE when you sign up and deposit, and you're going to get double whatever you deposit. Bike to the wide receivers. Let's see what else we got. I've got Jarvis Landry all the way up at wide receiver 14 against the Jets. I just feel like this is a no-fail, no possible way he could bust this game. 
Deontay Johnson doing his thing up at wide receiver 16. The guy just continues to produce. It's actually kind of wild, the the volume that he's putting up. He just, they're, all of the receivers there are just wildly inefficient. Like, they're just getting 1,000 targets and turning them into, like, 100 yards. 1,000 to 100. It's not good, but that's just the way the offensive scheme is kind of working. It's all short passes. They're not taking shots downfield. Might be a testament to Ben's arm at this point, but as long as Deontay Johnson is getting 72 targets a game, We'll keep firing him up as a wide receiver, too. Right behind him, I've got the two Rams wide receivers. I've got Woods at 17, Cooper Cup at 18. This is not like I actually like Woods more. It's just impossible to know who's going to have the bigger game. Sometimes it's Cup, sometimes it's Woods. Both of them have a great matchup against Seattle, who've actually been pretty good against wide receivers as of late, so a little bit of a downgrade there. But all in all, it just fucking is what it is. I can't pretend like I know what the fuck's going to happen with the, the Rams wide receiver group. It's impossible. Marvin Jones is the one right behind them. Okay, 17 Woods, 18 Cup, 19 Marvin Jones. Now, I've talked about Marvin Jones earlier this week. Marvin Jones has been very, very good as of late. Kenny Galladay's not going to play again. Tampa Bay Bucks' pass defense has been letting up a lot, a lot to opponents. And I don't, I don't think, do we have any updates on Mr. Carlton Davis? Let me check that. Their top cover corner may be out this week. Carlton, I'd be so pissed if my mom named me Carlton. Actually, that's kind of, it's kind of like swaggy, to be honest. Things that become so unswaggy that they're swaggy are kind of cool. Carlton Davis is likely a game time decision on Saturday. It's not promising. Bucks injury report. Carlton Davis has missed practice again. So they're probably going to be without Carlton Davis, which is an obvious upgrade for Marvin Jones. Why I have him all the way up at wide receiver 19. What else sticks out here? What else sticks out here? So Emmanuel Sanders was a guy I admittedly like did not really want any part of last week. I just don't really trust. Although he had most of his yards on one big play and I don't think that's going to be the norm. They're probably going to be without Traquan Smith, obviously without Michael Thomas. So there aren't a lot of options for the targets here. So I have Emmanuel Sanders up at uh, wide receiver 25. He can definitely get into your lineups and you can feel pretty fucking good about it. Marquise Brown, 27. Antonio Brown, 28. Rashard Higgins up at 29. All three of those guys in a row, I have five spots consecutively higher than ECR. Uh, Marquise Brown, obviously, again, as I already mentioned, gets a tough matchup with James Bradbury. So be weary about that. Antonio Brown's look pretty good. He's starting to click with Tom Brady a little bit too. And again, fantastic Detroit Lions matchup. But just like the Rams wide receivers, it's very hard to predict what's going to happen on a weekly basis. So Antonio Brown doesn't catch the one deep ball. What are we looking at here? And then Rashard Higgins. Again, you're going against the Jets, right? And this is a defense that multiple receivers, Jarvis Landry and Rashard Higgins can both fire up and fucking cook up. And Baker Mayfield's been cooking up. So we're going to continue to let him do his chef thing in the kitchen. Jarvis Landry. Rashard Higgins, both good plays at the wide receiver position. Tyler Lockett, I've finally given up, which probably means this is where he has his fucking pop-off game. I've got him down at wide receiver 33, which is seven spots lower than consensus. So ahead of him, I have Juju. I have T.Y. Hilton. I have Robbie Anderson, which I don't know if I would actually personally start those guys over Tyler Lockett now that I'm looking at it. A possible banged-up DK Metcalf, that's not a fact, nor... Uh, any logical reasoning behind that. I'm just saying he was banged up at the end of the game. Maybe he's a little bit banged up. Maybe he's not. But Tyler Lockett has sucked straight ass cheeks for me for the last like six weeks. So I put him down at wide receiver 33, which again probably means that he's guaranteed to pop the fuck off. What else we got? We got T. Higgins at 35. I think T. Higgins is a solid play because Tyler Boyd, I think, is unlikely to play. He's got that concussion, and I don't think he's practiced yet. He has not cleared concussion protocol. So he's probably on the worst side of a 50-50 chance to play he does not practice on Wednesday and he had suffered the concussion on Monday night football which means he's got even less time to clear the protocol so I think it's going to be the T Higgins show whatever that's fucking worth with Ryan Finley at quarterback or brand who I don't even know who the quarterback is at this point to be honest uh they do play Houston though who's a terrible pass defense they're terrible run defense too but Overall, uh, I think T. Higgins is fine as a wide receiver three in your lineups. Yeah, that's really all I want to talk about at the wide receiver position. If you have any specific questions, obviously be sure to drop them in the comment section down below. Hit the thumbs up while you're down there. You could hit us up on Twitter at Nick underscore BDGE, but everyone on the Big Dogs team will answer you, get back to you at one point or another. If you tweet at us, I will usually very rarely ever answer sit star questions but if you drop them in the in the youtube comment section pretty early on usually like the first 10 15 20 comments i'll reply to as, as soon as i can when the video actually drops so if you're one of the first ones to do so you might get a reply from me quickly otherwise you'll have to sign up for patreon patreon.com forward slash bdge which is where you'll get this week's rankings it is chip week these are the most important rankings of the week what else do we got eh, fuck a tight end Fuck a piss test. Looking at the defensive rankings, I mean, a pretty standard shit with the rankings this week. The only one that's 
a lot higher than consensus is Houston Texans. I have them up at four. They are playing at home against the Cincinnati Bengals. And this is just kind of like my formula right here. The Texans fit this mold perfectly. They are eight point favorites. They are at home. They are playing a backup, if not the third string quarterback. So give me all of the Houston Texans defense, even though they fucking stink. I don't care. You look at the math, you look at the numbers, it lines up. Everything lines up. Week 16 lines up for Scott to win the GoFade Me Dynasty League Championship. So congrats, Scott. Again, you're just a fucking the GOAT. You're a mogul. You're a dynamo. There's no stopping you. Six championships coming your way. Congratulations to everybody that's playing in the championship. And congratulations, more importantly, to their, their opponents. So thank you all for hanging out with me this year. Thank you all for sticking around for this video, for all the fucking videos. We've got content coming out all offseason. Dynasty related, next year's season long shit related. Fade the public will obviously stay. We have not missed a week yet. Almost two straight years without missing a week, which is fucking absurd because those two idiots are. You know what? They're not idiots, okay? Just Snacks is an idiot. I love y'all. I'm out. I'll see you on tomorrow's live stream. Patreon QA live stream. Patreon.com forward slash BDG. I love you. Goodbye.